and welcome to Theorycraft. My name is Ben, and this is the channel dedicated for all things nerdy, whether it's TV shows or movies. For this week, obviously, a lot of interesting clips came out of the DC fandom, where they showcased a lot of upcoming series, as well as movies. Two of which I really cannot wait for, which is why we're here today. So, the two main ones that I'm going to be covering for today's episode is The Batman, which is starring Robert Pattinson as Batman, and, of course, Black Adam, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Black Adam. While a lot of us obviously know that DC are creating their own little universe to a degree, I think it has been a very slow process that just suddenly exploded out of nowhere. Because while we've got some of their TV shows such as The Flash, there's also Doom Patrol, which has been going for the past three years, and Titan, Stargirl's on its second series at the moment, and it's just getting more and more bonkers by the day. But I am so glad they are finally deciding to get a little bit more out of the little cluster of ideas that's just Batman and Superman. As me and Jack have said many times on this channel, that DC had so much potential and so many opportunities to do it before, but as soon as they step out of the limelight of the two Cape, Cru the two Cape Crusaders, they end up going a bit ah, when it goes wrong and then go back to basics. But I think for now, they are definitely getting more of a feel as to what may or may not work. And so, this is my notes for today. So, with Batman, I'm kind of intrigued as to whether or not it's meant to be a whole reboot of Batman, or whether it's meant to be a prequel version to... I mean, from what we were told originally, it was meant to be the early days of Batman to Ben Affleck's Batman. But then, now that doesn't make much sense, because we've got a completely different version of Alfred, who is played by Andy Serkis. But the one thing that I do find quite funny with Alfred Pennyworth is that originally in the comics he was just the butler, he was very prim and popper, a very typical British butler sort of idea, yes sir, and very prim and proper. But over time, his character has got more and more cockney, <laughs> just as much as the universe has got more and more gritty. And it's just, it makes me laugh that the more gritty Batman gets, the more gritty his butler gets. To the point where I wouldn't be surprised if Alfred ended up being a step in Batman while Batman's recovering from being beaten black and blue by, say, Bane. But it just makes me laugh that Alfred doesn't really have much of a fighting prowess as a character. He's not meant to be a character that's hard as nails. He's not meant to be a character that's designed to be gruff and ready. And He's just a gentleman's butler. He's there as sort of a conscience. It's almost like a Jiminy Cricket type thing where he's there on the shoulders of Batman just to make sure that he doesn't overstep the line. And the thing is, obviously, now that Batman is getting darker and darker, the line is... <sighs> I don't know how to describe it, but the line for Batman isn't as defined as it used to be, where originally the idea would be that, Bat well, I mean, when the comics first came about, Batman was happy to use guns, but then over time, obviously, the concept of Batman using guns on anybody, he was fully against, obviously, part and parcel of the storyline that Batman hates guns because that's what killed his parents. Makes sense. But... In the more modern movies, we are seeing more and more weaponry on his, both his tank, car, bike, any form of vehicle that he has, does have quite ball high ballistic rounds of ammo, whether it be rifles or shotgun blasts or machine guns. So Batman is definitely getting more and more violent. But... I... The way that this Batman within the trailer 
seems to behave is that he seems quite novice. Like he's very early on into who he is as Batman, trying to define how far is too far. But I don't know as to whether or not that's going to work or not. Are we going to see him progress into this Batman? Or is it literally we start the movie where he's literally working with the GCPD and he's been in Gotham for maybe say a few months, maybe a year at the most. Like it's it's slightly early days for Batman, but he's in the process of becoming the better Batman, but he's done the legwork to try and win over the police at least. Like it's a lot of unpacking to try and figure out with Batman because it's been a very long time, I think, with any of the movies that Batman actually worked with the GCPD. Other than the 90s cartoon series, which again did take some time within the whole storyline, and of course the original Adam West Batman TV series, I honestly do not remember any other version of Batman that has worked with the GCPD so easily. Like, there's normally a lot of friction, and it only seems to go away when G- James Gordon comes into the picture. But it's one of these things that there's obviously going to be a hell of a lot of things that will be going on within this movie itself. We've got, obviously, the Riddler is meant to be the main bad guy of it all, which... The way they've done him is even more interesting because a lot of the time the Riddler is more of a showman. It's more of trying to do a sort of heist. He's more of a jewel thief type villain than he is a sadistic killer. But that's what makes it more interesting. The new movie is that he seems to come across more of a serial killer type villain with a mixture of jaw, uh, jigsaw, where he's designing all these intricate riddles or whatever as a catch-me-if-you-can type scenario where his own intelligence is so, well, to him it's so advanced compared to everyone else that he's able to mess with people in such a way to come up with this sadistic style of villainy. Like, it's different but i'm just curious as to how it all plays out it always makes me laugh that all of batman's villains always end up in arkham asylum because there's only two places that they can go within the whole of gotham if you're a criminal is that you either commit to being criminally insane or you go to blackgate and nine nine times out of ten people would rather go to arkham asylum Because Blackgate is kind of like Gotham's version of Alcatraz. But again, it's one of these things that part and parcel with Batman is it... I suppose it makes sense to the people in Gotham, but outside the scope of that, it just seems such a weird thing that someone that's so capable of creating such horrifying monolithic crimes or whatever just gets... locked away in the loony bin, and that's it. Like, <laughs> it just seems a very half ass measure in terms of trying to stop the bad guy. I am quite intrigued as well, though, that they are playing off the mafia concept within Batman, because that used to be such a big part of Batman's character. It was one of the few things of the Gotham TV series that I really enjoyed. I just wish that they hadn't rushed it because the early on days of batman was that there was the falcone uh i can never remember the other mafia family but penguin is obviously heavily tied to it as well because he creates his own little mafia and then ends up taking out both crime families and basically becomes the mob boss and so it's going to be interesting to find a version of penguin that finally seems to be both sort of like a godfather mafia boss, but also someone that's just stark ravingly bonkers. They did attempt it within Gotham, but while the actor did do an amazing job, 
he just he was so scrawny. Like the whole point of Penguin is he's quite a bloated guy. Like that's why he looks. That's why he's called the Penguin because he looks like a penguin, short, stubby, and quite waddly. But again, it's adding to what is the Batman besides all these crazy bonkers um, bad guys. Where you got perhaps the Joker who's just a sadistic clown that just loses his flipping marbles every five minutes. It's nice to find that they try to find a fine line between insanity and reality. Like there is an element of corruption with the mafia side of things within Gotham. And then you got the entire loony bin side of things with the Riddler. Whether or not they're going to blur the lines, who knows? But it will be interesting to see as to how the Batman actually evolves by the end of the movie. Because the one thing that I've noticed through the trailer is that he is very aggressive. And yes, there are times where Batman does lose it. He is noted to be a very calm and collected character because he knows that his emotions can get the better of him, which is where things get sloppy and he ends up making mistakes. Batman is the one of the top heroes within DC primarily because he has spent so much time and effort into training to be the best of what he is. So this is why it begs the question as to how much of a novice this version of Batman that Pattinson is playing is going to be because there's going to be a lot of lessons learned, I think, within the movie as to how to approach the bad guys without getting emotions involved, which is where Catwoman comes in, because I think she's going to be a very vital part in the entire movie. I think she's going to be the piece between Bruce wanting to keep Gotham safe and make it a better place, but also trying to find his own sense of happiness with her. And given the fact that she is both a criminal and someone that he loves, it's a hard line to try and find which side he can pick while picking her at the same time. And so it always comes down to the point with Batman and Catwoman is which means more to him, being the Batman or being Bruce Wayne. A lot of the time it's said in comics that Bruce Wayne is more of a facade and that Batman is the true version of Bruce, if that makes any sense. But again, it's one of these things where what exactly is the relationship going to be like within this movie? Is Catwoman going to be more of a distraction to Batman? Is she going to be a ploy that's set up by the Riddler? Is she going to be someone genuinely actually wanting to be a part of the Batman's life? There's lots of if, buts and maybes, which is why I really cannot wait for this movie, because it actually gives Batman a lot more growth than just being a billionaire that lost his parents and just decided to put on some leather to kick the living crap out of bad guys. That's the general gist with Batman. But again, it's going to be intriguing as to how the character develops. I would love to see a sequel. I would actually be inclined to see him actually have his own Robin. I mean, we have got Robin... And sorry, well, we did have Robin and we've got Nightwing and now we've got Red Hood within the Titans TV series. But we didn't really have enough time to learn as to who they were as Robin. It's just like they're trying to step out of Batman's shadow, but that was as far as we got before one of them dies, one of them gets reborn and the other decides to just make something else of himself. It's... It's a very iffy series, Titans. Don't get me wrong. I have enjoyed season three, but I feel like the way that they dealt the Red Hood story could have been better. Like, the whole point of Red Hood is that he was, he was Robin. He died because Joker just lost it and decided to prove a point to Batman and lost it. And... I don't understand why they had to completely skim over that and use the Scarecrow to basically completely confuse the whole concept of the Red Hood story. Like, it completely ruined it. And I still don't understand what on earth is going on with this season. 
I was watching the latest episode today. Again, it's a random tangent, but there's the scene, literally, it picks up with like Nightwing being shot by Jason. Then you get Raven and Beast Boy take him to the Lazarus pit that's conveniently in Gotham. And Dick Grayson goes in there while wearing the Nightwing suit. As he's getting healed via the Lazarus pits, he finally comes to terms with who he is and what he's going to do. Da, 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 da. He gets revived by the pool. Where the hell did his Nightwing suit go? Like It completely baffled me that he, he went into the pool wearing the Nightwing suit. When he comes out, he's just wearing his normal clothes that conveniently is his jacket that he'd normally wear when he's in civilian clothes. So I am completely baffled as to where did the Nightwing suit go? Did the Lazarus Pit just absorb it? Did the Nightwing suit just dissolve? But I just... My, I digress. But yes, the Batman with Robin Pattinson is definitely going to be a lot more gritty, a lot more aggressive, but more importantly, it kind of grounds him in a more realistic way in terms of like corruption and the whole idea of a sadistic killer that he's trying to hunt down while working with the police it almost feels like a true crime slash thriller movie than it does a comic book movie which is going to be quite intriguing nonetheless and so my next topic that i want to sort of briefly go over because it hasn't been an awful lot to go over yet is obviously Black Adam. Now this is a project that Dwayne The Rock Johnson has been trying to get done for the past 14 years apparently so that kind of tells you how stubborn DC are but oh my god does it look amazing. The only bit that we got so far within the trailer is obviously there's a excavator some sort of uh, archaeological, well it's not archaeological, probably a government team to a degree that are looking for something within this tomb. It, whether it's the power itself that is linked to Black Adam, who knows? From what I can gather from IMDB, I think the group of mercenaries are supposed to be checkmate. I could be wrong, but I believe it's sh meant to be checkmate. Mate, which again is a group that's held run by Amanda Waller, which begs the question whether she is looking for power as a contingency plan against Superman, because it's the only thing I can logically understand, given the fact that Superman is one of the strongest heroes within DC movie universe to date so far, that Obviously, Amanda Waller, being who she is, wants to have contingency plans in case he does go rogue. Obviously, the team come across the tomb, and one of the members of the team unwittingly says, Shazam! And obviously unlocks the imprisonment of Black Adam. His first suit looks very, very aged. Like, obviously, he's from ancient Egypt times, so perhaps the style choice of this costume back then was a beta version, who knows? But it does definitely look very worn out, very used. But the thing that I love most of all about this is how many other DC characters are going to be mentioned, well, being part of this movie. We've got Doctor Fate, who's played by Piers Brosnan. We've also got... Let's have a look. We've also got... The Adriana Tamazi, which is also known as Isis, which I'm amazed that they're able to use that name, given how it's been twisted the past few years, but we won't divulge into that. We've also got Hawkman, a character that DC Legends of Tomorrow really ruined, but it's going to be interesting as to how it plays out, as I think he's going to have a very interesting dynamic with Dr. Fate, because the way that Carter Hall is, is basically he has reincarnation abilities, him and his love interest uh, Hulk woman, or Hulk girl, whatever you want to call her, they were around ancient Egypt times, they got cursed to basically fall in love and die over and over and over. 
So with each reincarnation, they remember their previous lives. And then the moment they meet each other and fall in love again, one of them is destined to die. And then they live, die and repeat. It's a very vicious circle, but it is an interesting story nonetheless. But this is where the concept of Dr. Fate and Hawkman may come in, as Dr. Fate is also known as Nabu. Nabu is the Egyptian god of wisdom and knowledge, I believe. So therefore, I would imagine that perhaps their relationship is that because Kent Nelson finds the Helmet of Fate, he unlocks the being Dr. Fate, realises that Black Adam has escaped his imprisonment, which may have been a result of the wizard, him, and Carter Hull, or Hawkman, whatever you want to call him, back 5,000 years ago. And so it is down to at least Hawkman and Dr. Fate to put him back, but obviously it may not be enough. So then we get the other characters along the way, which is going to be Maxine Hunkel, also known as Cyclone. And I said, obviously, we're going to have Isis, so she will come into some use as well. But even more bizarrely, we're going to get Atom Smasher. We did briefly see him in a live action version in The Flash Season 2, Episode 1, when we got Christ well, the two different realities merging, well, not technically merging, but meeting one another. But again, Atom Smasher is a very bizarre character where it's Ant-Man where he can shrink and grow, but there are other abilities along the way that does make him quite a formidable opponent to go against. He can density control himself, he's able to phase, which I was unaware of. But as I say, the main thing is his size at manipulation. And well, it's going to be intriguing as to how much use he's going to be, because, again, it's one of these characters that, although DC's got a lot of different characters in their roster, they're not often used. The big thing as well with this character is that he's been on again, off again in terms of being a good guy or bad guy. So it could be one of these things where maybe he's a bad guy at first that he gets picked up by the good guys to try and rope them in to somehow defeat Black Adam. Who knows how it's going to go down. But again, it makes me wonder as to whether he's going to realise that he should do better, be a good guy by the end of the movie, and die, because unfortunately that does happen a lot within movies like this. Or he's going to end up more of an anti-hero, because Black Adam used to be a full-on bad guy. He is literally the mirrored version of... Well, I wouldn't say mirrored version, but he is literally the exact same as Shazam, also known as Captain Marvel, also known as Billy Batson. But obviously he, for one, he is a grown-up, not a child. Two, he is more full-on when he uses his powers and does get quite... <sighs> I don't know how to describe it, but he is very full-on with what he does and he obviously becomes the leader of his home country, Kondok. So... He's not a full-on bad guy as he used to be where he just antagonised Captain Marvel slash Shazam, he's now got to the point where he's an anti-hero, where he'll only look out for his own home country, but anything else besides that, and he won't let up. He will basically kick the living crap out of anyone that will ruin his hometown. Well, home country, should I say. But again, it's an interesting roster of characters. I mean, Cyclone... It's kind of like Red Tornado. She is somehow Red Tornado's granddaughter. I don't know how. But basically has an array of wind-based abilities that essentially gives her the ability to fly, is able to create wind tunnels, essentially just blast. It's kind of like Ang from Avatar, The Last Airbender, where it's like... <laughs> but... It's, other than that, she's not, I say she's a reasonably powerful character, but she's not someone that I would imagine being 
formidable enough to just be on her own. She would need a little bit of help along the way. But who knows? It depends on how they showcase each of these characters. As for Isis, I think she is going to be one of the key characters as well. She could be, by some random fluke, the reincarnation of Black Adam's wife, perhaps 5,000 years ago, and she's able to unlock her abilities by some help from Dr. Fate, a.k.a. Kent Nelson. But she does have a lot of elemental-type powers, which would make her quite interesting to fight against Black Adam if that did happen. Primarily because, of course, her powers are magic as well, so it makes it a lot more of a battle for her to combat against him if they're on equal playing fields in terms of where their magics come from. But it's... Again, it's there's not an awful lot we've got so far for this movie. It's just one of these things that I cannot wait for because it's nice to finally see that DC are expanding their character roster list within movies. I just hope they don't screw it up because they have had the potential for so long to create their universe to actually make an interesting, cohesive universe just like the MCU. But anytime they step out of the Batman or Superman trope, they panic if it doesn't go as well as they hope, and then go back to square one. But there we go, folks. That's just my little ranty video for today. If you have any ideas what I should talk about next, drop us a comment down below, and I'll look into it. Hopefully Jack will be joining me soon. He is still dealing with a lot of personal things at the moment, and he is getting there. It's just... Not as easy for him at the moment, but that's not my news to divulge. So again, thanks for joining me folks, stay safe, stay home, and catch you later.